Welcome to Presidential Fight Club, the show that answers the question, if all 44 presidents fought each other one-on-one, who would win? Hosted by two history professors who have too much time on their hands, Scott Rank and James Early. Welcome to the Western Regional of Presidential Fight Club. In the Southeast Regional, we saw a lot of presidents, especially founding fathers from the early periods in American history. Now we're going to move a lot more into the modern period. We're going to see Clinton, Reagan, both Bushes, LBJ, Hoover, Truman, and Eisenhower, and just for good measure, a couple of other earlier presidents like Grant and Zachary Taylor. In our first fight, we have two presidents that are straight out of the modern period, very modern period, Richard Nixon versus George W. Bush, Bush 43. James, Bush the elder or Bush the younger, like Pliny the younger, what does he bring to the fight? Well, that's a good question. George W. is not famous for being a big athlete or he's not famous for being super duper tough or a big fighter or anything like that he did serve in the military it was air national guard some people accuse him of doing that to get out of actually having to go to vietnam but whatever the case may be he probably had a little bit of hand-to-hand combat training uh just being part of the national guard even though it was air national guard i imagine in the modern military everybody gets at least a little bit in fact i know they do get some uh when he was a young man he was not really in any sports except for one that might actually come in handy. He played rugby. And if anybody knows anything about rugby, it's extremely violent and tough version of football. I mean, I know I guess a rugby purist would probably get mad at me for saying it's a version of football, but it's, it's football esque in many ways. But uh, I saw a bumper sticker once. In fact, I used to see it all the time saying, give blood, play rugby. (laughs) So it's like it's like old time football, like we were talking about with Gerald Ford, but but with no pads, no helmets or anything. So he he probably developed some coping skills, some survival skills, as well as the ability to push and shove people around. So and he was a cheerleader when he was in college. (laughs) Yes. Male cheerleader. So he's probably very flexible and maybe not as flexible at age 35 as he was when he was in college. But he's going to know how to duck and how to move around somebody and dodge and things like that. So I think he's, uh, he may not be anybody's Teddy Roosevelt, but I think he is capable of defending himself. Okay. Well, with Richard Nixon, I think I almost have to apologize for him right at the start that I'm even defending him. When you think of Nixon, you don't think of a fighter. People think of Watergate era Nixon, the jowly one with flop sweat as the camera lights are on him and he's saying, I am not a crook and other things like that. And the image of Nixon that we know of really doesn't lend itself to be a tough fighter. Not a small guy, not a James Madison, but also not a Taft. He was 5'11", weighed about 175 pounds, jowly. From childhood, he's not very healthy. He suffered from motion sickness and hay fever. And near the end of his term as president, he developed a phlebitis in his leg So we don't think of him as too healthy, although he was in the U.S. Naval Reserve. He served in World War II. He earned two battle stars for service in the Pacific, was a commander there. So we have to keep that in mind. I don't know what the combat training would have been uh, for a navalman, but by the 20th century, it's much more well-developed than it would have been in the past. We've uh, started to rope in some other factors with our presidents beyond just how tough they are and what kind of physical training they've had. Famously, Nixon is paranoid. Uh, There was a psychoanalyst, Dr. David Abrahamson, who, in sort of a remote diagnosis of Nixon, said that he described him as a man toward by inner conflict, lonely, hypersensitive, narcissistic, suspicious, and secretive. So whatever, uh, however that helps out in a fight, uh, Nixon is watching everywhere. He's played out the scenarios in his mind of where this will go. Uh, probably far more than what would actually happen. So he could be shadow boxing you far more than he's actually fighting you. So take that if it's going to work or if it's going to not work. Even if he loses, his uh, compulsive lying tendencies might cause him to claim victory no matter what happens. So Nixon is a winner in his mind no matter what. 
But is that enough to sway the fight? James, who wins in Nixon versus George W. Bush? Well, the voters in American history fanatics pretty overwhelmingly gave this to George W. Uh, And it may just have something to do with the fact that Nixon is not very popular. We've talked about this before. Sometimes people get reputation points, and especially when there's a close match. It would be close, but uh, George W. is going to triumph in about 10 rounds. But at the end of the fight, Nixon gets up off the mat and faces the crowd and raises his hands. And he says, you won't have Dick Nixon to kick around anymore. I was just going to say that fits in so perfectly to being literally kicked by another president. So he's gone. Yep. He's out. Goodbye, Richard. Okay. Well, G dub advances and later on, we're going to see another Bush in this regional, but we're moving on to the next fight. We're going to see two other presidents that are popular for different reasons. One Ulysses S grant, the other one, William Jefferson Clinton. See you then. Thanks for listening to Presidential Fight Club. If you'd like to download your own printable bracket sheets for each regional tournament so you can guess how the tournament will go, check out presidentialfightclub.com. We'd appreciate it if you could rate and review us on Apple Podcasts as well. Thanks for listening, and may you fight with the stamina of Teddy Roosevelt, the courage of George Washington, and the reach of Abraham Lincoln.